If ZBrush was a car, the brush system would be the engine, the transmission, the wheels, the brakes, and the steering wheel. Understanding the brush system puts you in the driver's seat. As sculptors, we have to sculpt a variety of different forms. Sometimes we sculpt soft forms, such as those of the face. Other times we sculpt hard forms or semi-hard forms. We also approach sculpting in a variety of different ways. Sometimes we sculpt loosely. Other times we sculpt with very tight, refined surfaces. ZBrush must pull all of this together. It must allow us to sculpt hard forms while giving us the freedom that we need to sculpt soft forms. It must give us the freedom and flexibility to sculpt loosely and spontaneously while at the same time giving us the control and finesse we need for highly refined surfaces. The entire brush system can be put along those two axes of hard to soft form, loose to controlled sculpting. At the center you have very core features like draw size, the edit curve, Z add or Z sub. Along the outside you have things like the brush types, is it the flattened brush, the standard brush, clay, blob, trim, planer. And in the center you have all the different uh, features and modifiers of the brush system that will tend towards hard controlled sculpting or soft loose sculpting. So let's take a look at this inside of ZBrush. Let's start by looking at soft freehand uh, brushes. The standard brush which is on by default is a good example just rubbing along the surface shows you that that is a very soft very freehand loose uh, brush if we switch to the form brush you can see that is another one that is very good for just building up loose undefined but general masses the clay brush is another one though it starts to get a bit more controlled and a little bit more um, possibilities with hard surface sculpting. Not quite there yet though. Now if we take a look at the flattened brush we can see a much more uh, hard surface approach coming together. try flatten B as well and our edges are a little bit crisper. Now if we switch to trim dynamic we're getting even further into hard surface still freehand still very loose but with the capacity to get very specific form it works really well when you combine it with the clay brush to build up form and then switch to trim dynamic to shape that to start to introduce some control we can go to stroke turn lazy mouse on backtrack and try the backtrack line feature. This by definition will give us a lot more control. We click somewhere on the surface, drag out, and then drag backwards over the area that you just drew. Now this allows you to cut into a surface along that line, cut through add to and on and on. 
We can also look to the Trim Adaptive Brush for even more of a controlled approach, allowing us to pick one normal on the uh, surface and drag out form that will strictly adhere to those boundaries. Trim Adaptive uses the Once Orientate feature. We can go a step further by looking at the Trim Front brush, which allows us to cut whole sections away. This is using the specific orientation feature in the brush palette. And all they've done is clicked on the arrow and dragged to the canvas, which has locked all the effects of this brush to being perpendicular to the Z of the canvas. Lastly, we can look at soft controlled features. So let's go back to our soft brushes like the standard brush and if we add the stroke uh, backtrack line feature then we will get a very specific very controlled uh, stroke. We can also switch to say the blob brush which is a very soft very loose freehand brush we can select the backtrack path brush as well as making sure to snap to track and for extra intensity add a alpha to it and draw out a specific path that then is brushed back along Understanding the ZBrush brush system will give you the ability to tackle any sculpting problem in front of you. So good luck with all of your sculpting and I hope you enjoyed.